know if a lot of people's schools required them to read. Looking back on it, there's definitely some subject. subject, subject. <laughs> I broke there. That was fun. Hey, everybody. My name is Kelsey, and we're about to get very, very nerdy with books that I will never reread. So I am planning a reread of one of my favorite series this year uh, with one of my friends. It's a buddy read. And it got me thinking about books that I would never reread. I always make, I've made a video like a long time ago about books that I would reread. And I'm not even sure how accurate that is anymore. But that got me thinking about books that I loved or brought some sort of enjoyment in some way to me when I read them but I'm probably not going to ever read them again. So I compiled a list and honestly a lot of these are books that I read when I was in like high school. Like that's the age that we're talking about. So a lot of these are nostalgia reads but there are a few that count as like recent reads and I thought I would just go through them. So we've got 10 to talk about today so let's dive in. The first one that kind of started off this idea for me personally was the Twilight series. Now this is my copy that I still have. Um, it as you can see has seen many a better days. I still have my entire series downstairs because I can't bring myself to unhaul it and I'm positive I'm never going to touch this one again. Um, I enjoyed my time reading this. I actually have reread this a couple of times when I was like rereading scenes that I really enjoyed or other things like that because I read this when I was in eighth grade. That's when I started this series. And so that's about the time I think when I was reading this, they were announcing the first movie. So it was about that time that everything kind of like really got popular, but it was like right, right around that time. But like many young girls in middle and high school, I was obsessed with the series. I dived in super, super quickly. I don't think I remember having a series that in like, I was so invested in um, minus like the Harry Potter series when I was younger. So this is my first like really big deep dive into the series and I just really enjoyed it. However, have, having grown up at this point, having read many things since then, having an aversion to like stories about vampires kind of now, um, I'm not sure I'd ever really dive back into the story as a whole because I... I don't know, like there's just this nostalgia attached to this book that I'm afraid if I dive into it again, I will never like it. You know, like it'll just ruin everything that I enjoyed when I read it. I have a lot of good memories of when I read it and like diving back in probably would um, dash those completely. So this is the first book that's on this list. But again, look at my copy. It like, it has seen a better days. There is scotch tape holding this together literally holding it together um to the spine so yeah yeah another one is one that I read for school and that is the kite runner and this one is one that I remember really enjoying um it's a tough tough book to get through but it is a book that I remember liking my time reading it there was very few required readings for school that I outright hated um, but this is one that I particularly enjoyed, but because of the tougher subject matter, I don't think I could ever actually dive back in. This one is one that, like I said, I read for school. I can't remember what grade I was in, but I was definitely in high school sometime when I dove into this story. And like I said, I remember liking it. I think it was my first book that I read that really wasn't like a book written by an American or an English author. It was my first step into other cultures, really. And it was my first step into a book that was about something significantly, maybe more disturbing or more hard, harder hitting for me and the conversations we had in class about that. And so this is definitely one of those books that I feel like a lot of people probably have read. Looking back on it, there's definitely some subject matter that I am questioning. Um, but I remember reading this for school and I remember talking about it. And I remember being particularly impacted by this story of friends and childhood and that kind of conversation. But this is definitely one that I think knowing the subject matter it's a tougher one to dive back in because it's so hard hitting. 
Another one I probably will never dive back into is Because of Wind Dixie by Katie DiCamillo. This is one that I, again, same thing, I have a lot of nostalgia attached to it. I will make my children read this, so maybe I will reread this in the sense of I will help my kids read it in the future, but I don't have any, like, plans to really dive back in. I remember diving into this and thinking, oh my god, I can't believe I have to read this book. It was like a required summer reading, and it just took me forever. I mean, these pages are nothing. I could probably finish this in a couple of hours now. But at the time, it took me all summer to finish this book. And then when the movie came out, I really enjoyed, by the time I was I was into this story, I really enjoyed it. But getting into it was really tough for me. And I just have a lot of connection with this. And I'm afraid, kind of like with Twilight, if I dive back in, my opinions might be skewed one way or the other because of how much I enjoyed this book because it started out not great. From what I remember when I read it when I was a kid, I remember not liking the beginning of it. So it's definitely a story that is important and I really like the story and I really like the adaption of it and I, you know, have a lot of good memories tied to it, but I'm not sure I'll ever actually dive back in. Another one is the Shiver series by Maggie Stiefvater. This is a series that was my very first step into the werewolf side of things. Um, I There used to be a book festival. That's what I thought. It was signed as well. That's another reason I'm not getting rid of it. But there was a book festival that always hit in Atlanta. And I would go all the time. And there would be a lot of random authors before they got big or people. Now that I know them, like Maggie Stiefvater, um, the authors of the beautiful creature series that I'm blinking on right now, Kim Eric Garcia and Margaret Stoll were there one time. So like looking back, there were some authors that were relatively bigger, but they were just starting out. And that's what this one was. I went to one of the like younger kids YA section and I remember them talking about this book and I was very very interested in the story and looking back on it now I don't remember a thing from this book series I just remember it's about werewolves and I remember very much enjoying it and I have all three of the books there might be four at this point but at the time there was only three and I have all of them and I've read all of them but again there's something about the nostalgia that if I read it now I feel like I wouldn't enjoy the series as much and I feel like there would be a lot of problems that I have would pick up on and I wouldn't have that nostalgia tied to it. And especially with this being my very first like step into shape-shifting werewolf type stories, this, I don't, I don't want to like ruin that, you know, but I did remember really enjoying this one. So I do have them and they will stay downstairs just because I can't bring myself to get rid of them. But yeah, I'm probably never going to read this one again or anything in the series. The next one, just like that one, is the Selection series by Kira Cass. Now, this is one that I did read after I'd graduated college, because that year, this was literally um, the year we graduated. So that fall was our very first time, Lauren and I, going to Y'all Fest, and there was a chance that Kira Cass was going to be there. Now, it turned out that she actually had to back out. I can't remember what it was, or maybe they were chances she was going to be there and then she didn't something happened but I read the first three back to back to back and very much enjoyed it to the point of like we've met her since and she has signed all of my books and I still want to hold on to these because there are still memories that I very much enjoyed because I binged this series in like a couple of days and that was not something I had ever done until then I didn't really like my momentum as far as reading goes it really didn't pick up into the last couple of years as far as like how often I read and how many things that I read because at that time I was getting out of college I was just discovering reading again for the first time like reading for enjoyment and the fact that I binged this and sat on the couch and like actually plowed through this series was like a big thing um and it's not like the most amazing thing I've ever read it's definitely more of like the fluffy um dystopian vibes to it and I remembered Lauren talking about this series that she had read a while ago and then while I was reading this we discovered that that was the same series that she had been talking about and I just really enjoyed it. I liked the Hunger Games and Bachelorette kind of elements to it. I thought it was really entertaining and I just plowed through it but again I don't think I would enjoy them now. I've tried some books by Hero Cast in the last couple of years and I just have not enjoyed them 
since this one. So I think that she is an author that I have grown out of as far as the age category and the enjoyment of her writing. So I don't want to go back in and ruin my enjoyment of the series because I still think very highly of the series, at least the first three books in the series. The second two books I can do without. But the first three books in the series, I very, very much enjoyed. The next one is, I know I, I swear I had a copy, but I must have gotten rid of mine. And that is Outlander. So this one is one that I read the first two books in the series and DNF the rest of them. Or I got rid of the rest of my side to DNF the series after the first two books because it was just so long and there were so many convoluted stories and plot lines. And I think I would have enjoyed it, but each book is just so long that I couldn't give myself like I couldn't really devote that much time to it but the first one I really enjoyed and it ended in a way that if you didn't want to continue with the series it had an ending so you could be satisfied with that one and I was I feel like after the first one I was good I didn't really need anything else the story continues from there obviously there's like seven or eight books there's probably more at this point but I really enjoyed my time reading this one but because of some of the brutality of Scotland in the time period that this is set, I don't think I can do it. Um, there are some aspects to the story that I very much enjoyed. There are some moments that were very, very sweet between our main two characters. But a lot of the end of this book is just so brutal that I couldn't do it again. Um, and I think I ended up giving this book like five stars when I read it, four or five stars when I read it, because I did enjoy the Highlander and the romantic elements that were in it. There was a lot of the plot that I enjoyed, but there was a lot of the darker plot that just I couldn't do it. Or like I, it was just hard to read. So going back into it, I don't think I would enjoy it um, nearly as much. I think this is one that I would pick and choose scenes to reread, but not reread the whole thing. Also, it's really long and it's just hard to get through, you know? Um, let, like take away the, the content from this book that's hard to get through. It's a thick book. All of these books are. So this is definitely a book that I enjoyed, but um, I am probably never going to be reading it. Next one is, a, I think, one of my newer books that I have read, and that is How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. This is a novella within the Cruel Prince series, which is a series that I very much enjoyed, and I would reread that series if I ever felt the need to. This is not part of that reread, however. This is just a collection of stories within the world, um, and some of them are from the prince's perspective. Some of them are parts of the story from his perspective. Some of them add to the story, but very few of them I felt were needed because we kind of understood Cardin's perspective when it comes to some of the book. Now he is obviously the cruel prince within the first book. Um, and this is, I think, entirely from his perspective. So Yes, some things give insight into his his story, but very few of the stories within here I felt I wanted to even read about. And like I was a, I'm a pretty big fan of that series. I don't talk about it a lot, but when I read it, I very much enjoyed my time reading it. And the fact that even I was like, I'm good. This this was just kind of okay. So yes, there's I think one story and specifically near the end that I enjoyed, but the rest of it didn't feel like it was needed for the enjoyment of the entire series. It just kind of felt like extra stuff just for the sake of doing extra stuff. And it didn't really bring anything into the story. So I enjoyed my time with it because it does give you some of those more popular scenes um, from a different perspective, which is always interesting, but I don't think it's needed as far as like an overarching look on the story. So this is a series that you want to dive into but you're questioning about this, I feel like you can skip it and be totally fine. So I'm probably never going to pick this one up again. The next one is another one that kind of revolves within that newer red, but is tough to read kind of one. And that is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is a story about grooming and it is a tough read. It's an important read. And I feel like a lot of people should read this book because there are things within this book that are unspeakable, but also definitely things that have happened. And so it is a very tough read, especially because you're from this perspective of this girl and you're seeing her go from falling in love to falling into this weird category of I can't escape. And it's dark. Again, important. I am glad that I read this story because like there are scenes within this book that still haunt me to this day. And I know that people have had to deal with things like that because it is, I think, very, very loosely 
inspired, let's say, by the whole R. Kelly situation. But I'm, I feel like I remember the author saying something like that. But there are definitely scenes within this book that are so tough and cringy and uncomfortable to read. So having read it, important. I think everyone should, should read this book. It is a good book to read, especially if you are interested in that conversation. But it's not one that I'm personally going to ever reread because it was such a tough subject to dive into. And there were scenes that I, I cannot unsee and they stick in your brain, you know, and they just kind of they make you uncomfortable. And that's the point of them. You should be uncomfortable with these scenes. But I don't think I can put myself through that one again, knowing what some of these scenes are going to be. So very important read. I think everyone should read it. Enjoy it is the wrong word, but I enjoyed my time reading this. We'll never pick it up again. All right, the next, the last two, I guess, are both kind of book series, like Twilight, that I read when I was younger. Uh, the first one is the Book of Ember series. There are four books in the series, but I have a bind up of the first three, and the fourth one is downstairs somewhere. Honestly, this one, this will show you how old this one, this is a Borders exclusive book. Does anyone else remember when Borders was a thing? Because that was my Barnes & Noble before I ever went to Barnes & Noble. This this was a, this is a chunk. This is a throwback as well. So this is the first three books in the series. There is a fourth one in this as well, but I've got it, like I said, separated downstairs. This is a very interesting story. Um, it takes place under the ground. It kind of is like a dystopian style story where they where um, people live under the ground because the world above is unsafe and you have a girl who is learning things about the city. I don't remember a lot that happened in this book, but I do remember kind of getting my first dystopian kind of book. This I read the series before I read Hunger Games. I don't think I was really in the dystopian. I read a few dystopian books, but I wasn't really into, you know, reading all of the dystopian all the time. I, I never read The Maze Runner. I never read the Divergent series, things like that that were really popular. But I did read this one and I did enjoy this one. However, I started this because I watched the movie and I really enjoyed the movie. So this is one of those that like I stumbled across the movie. I don't even know how we found it, but we ended up owning it and I really enjoyed it. So I had to know what the book was like and I did enjoy my time reading it. I will never dive back into this just because there are other things out there. Again, nostalgia is attached to this. I'm happy with having it where it is. And I don't remember a lot of this series. I remember the world. I don't remember how it ends. I mean, I remember some things because of this, the fourth book that comes out. She like wrote these three and then much later wrote the fourth one, I feel like. And there are aspects to this. Like I feel like the third book or maybe the second book um, isn't following the same people. Yeah, it's the third book. Isn't following the same people. It follows other people. And it felt unnecessary when I remember reading that. Like, I remember reading it thinking, why are we telling the story? So there are aspects of the series that I am good. I don't need to read them ever again. But I enjoyed when I did read it because I remember like looking this this is not a small book and I looked this thing around because it had all three of them in it and I remember enjoying it. But I'm thinking back on it now and I'm sure the writing would not work for me. I've read other things that are better. The dystopian vibe is not really my thing really anymore. Um, not that it ever really was, but it's less of my thing now. So yes, definitely a series that I have enjoyed, but we will uh, never touch. And the last one is a series that I don't think I've ever talked about on this channel as far as having read, but I own all of them and I think they're so interesting as a concept. And that is The Secrets of the Immortal Nicholas Flamel. This is the first one, The Alchemist. There are six, I think, and I read these back to back to back to back to back. So would these be interesting to reread? Probably because there's a lot of mythology that at the time I did not understand. And now I've had a better, wider understanding of mythology from a bunch of different cultures that probably would fit well within the story. However, this gives me Percy Jackson vibes, having started the Percy Jackson series and where my feelings are towards that one. I don't think I would enjoy this one nearly as much. I don't think this one counts as a middle grade, but it's that weird in between middle grade, older middle grade, younger YA kind of range that I feel like Percy Jackson falls into. So if you want other mythology kind of stories, this is a great one. I dived into this one and enjoyed my time. I like 
read them back to back to back. My dad actually picked this one up first and then I read it because of him. And there are pictures of me reading these on the beach. Like I, it's, I dove into this one for a long time because it was a decent chunk of a series and I really enjoyed it, but it's very convoluted. And from what I remember, there's a lot of moving pieces. And I think there is a chance that I could have enjoyed it. Like I could enjoy it now again, but I think that I'm good. You know, like I've read it. I am happy with my experience. I have a lot of good memories tied to it, but it's a six book series. It is a lot to commit to when I have so many other things that I haven't even touched yet that I want to read. So I will hold on to these. I, um, it bothers me because one of them is in hardback and the rest are in paperback. So we might have to fix that at some point in the future. But this is definitely a series that I want to hold on to. I think a lot of people would enjoy and maybe not one that I've ever heard anyone talk about. So like I said, if you like Percy Jackson, check this one out. Uh, but it's definitely one that I think knowing myself now, I don't want to dedicate the time to reread and I don't want to ruin my enjoyment of it when I did reread it originally by reading it again. And that's it. That is a look at just some of the handful of books that I enjoyed when I read them, but I feel like I don't need to reread them again for one reason or the other. Let me know if you have any books like this from your childhood that you would never reread or for other reasons. Um, I would love to know some of the books that you have not decided to, to not pick up again. But as always, please let me know all of your thoughts down below. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you'd like to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links. So go check all that out. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.